Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, as you can see in the background, the Kaim is Köln. One of the most, I'd say, cinematic ships in the game. It is the new top tier light cruiser for the Germans with a battle rating of 5.3, and this is the first impressions. Let me clarify it. This is now the ship that I played a few battles in it, but I didn't have the time yet to play all the other nations light cruisers, which I also got from Gaijin for a test period of 30 days. There is only so much that I can do. I will still try to keep a look um, or get a look at the jets and also on the other ships and also the other tanks that came new into the game. But please be patient. I know a lot of you are eager to have a look at me to have a look at this or that, but there is just only so much that I can do. This is a bit of a problem with, you know, a new patch. There is just so much so much spading so much playing and this is a first impressions because i haven't played all the other light cruisers so i don't know how they play and i also don't know how good the karmas Köln is in a direct fight against them versus destroyers and all the other old light cruisers that currently people play in order to try to get their hands on the new light cruisers this is a monster and it's a monster in terms of sniping and also eating up a lot of the damage at long ranges in particular but if you play this ship wrong in try to go into brawling and um, try to just do crazy stuff with it you get punished for it and the strength and the weaknesses of the ship are the triple turrets. They not just only look cool, but they are also, <laughs> how to say it, they, if you knock one of them out, which is not difficult, only 30mm of frontal armor, you lose a third of your firepower. Then there are also a lot of torpedo tubes that can get hit with HE or AP and then they detonate and then you're amorect. The next thing is the armor. You have a similar armor layout scheme compared to the KMS Empton. The belt is as thick and you also have a turtle back of uh, here 10 millimeters, but that 10 millimeter is only a quarter compared to the uh, KMS Empton's inner armor belt. And there you can see you have this uh, front bulkhead, 20 millimeters, so you cannot really go bow in or just uh, kite away because also the rear bulkhead is really prominent together with the um yeah here the turrets and the turret emplacements the barbettes so don't really force it but at long ranges the accuracy the mass velocity of the guns the hitting power of the shells the reload it is phenomenally good and this is what i try to now show you in one game but before before i want to show that incredible game there is one scene that just points out how I really feel about this ship. So I promised you a very good scene. Let's see what it is. Threat in the air, you say? Oh no, I don't think so. Who would win? I win. <laughs> oh my god, I love the guns on this ship so much just look at the dispersion it is absolutely awesome and now let's see how awesome it really is because if you think this is a fluke shot versus aircraft i say yes you're right that was a lucky shot that i had the right leads but the precision and the firepower is awesome so you can see i tried to get rid of the torpedoes as fast as possible not to hit anything but to just empty my torpedo tubes and why this shall be hammered in your brain with this videos because you will not believe which kind of shots i will pull off with uh, this ship today and the first customer is a chemist empton first armor piercing high explosive shot uh, or salvo is out and um i you, you just can see how much damage i do next salvo i hold back for a few seconds up until i get a visual confirmation and there it goes and I actually want to try to hit the Amorak, but I miss them a little bit and actually hit the torpedo tubes. And that, boys and girls, is the reason why you empty your torpedo tubes, even though you only have four torpedoes overall and not 12. There is the other Empton, and this time I try to actually calculate in such a way that I actually hit under the turrets where the Amorak is, but turtleback armor, not against AP CBC rounds. This is where they come in really handy. 
this is where they can really punch through turtle back armor even on the Empton. That Empton did not angle, that Empton was stationary together with the raw penetration power, the short distance and showing a perfect broadside. This is just what you can do with the Kaimas Cone. And this is where then it gets really interesting how to whittle down the HMS Dido, the British light cruiser, because there the Amorak is so submerged underwater that the penetration alone is not sufficient to actually reach it. So I don't know if I have to knock out here the turrets or if I have to just try to whittle down the crew one by one. And this is where then that ship gets really interesting as well. So now I actually focus here on the ships. I should switch here to the normal HE and I tried out certain things, how good it is now with the new patch, the ammunition and so forth. And that brings me now to the ammunition choice. We have three shell types. You have your normal HE, which is the stock round. Then you have the APCBC round, which is devastating if you hit the right target, as you just saw. And then also the base use HE. Now, the reason why I didn't use it here is not because I don't have access to it. It's the reason because you have a limited amount of shells that you can take if you choose the base use HE, if you choose also the armor piercing high explosive shells. And I think if you have to choose two shell types, and it is always a question of how many shells you can take, then I go for the armor piercing rounds and the rest high explosive. The high explosive for dealing with destroyers, it's sufficient, it's good enough, it deals massive damage, especially since you have the precision to hit multiple shells with one salvo, if your aim is good, that is. So the spread is, is really tight. And the armor piercing to punch through armor. And this is just the lesson that I learned, the lesson that I want to just um, tell you, which is so important. Because the limitation in terms of overall shell, I don't think that the, that the additional damage output from the base use HE justifies the lack of uh, overall shell capacity. So there you can see I actually push here into A. It's not deliberate uh, PT boat uh, sniping. But at this battle rating, what you see are the Project 206s and also some other nasty patrol boats where your normal patrol boats from lower battle rating from the beginning of a line do not really stand a chance. And so, yeah, as a light cruiser, I need to go actually into the PT boat area. Trust me, I don't want this. I'd love to snipe enemy cruisers um, at long ranges and there we can see how good the dispersion is. I just need to adjust here my aim and maybe switch to other shell types. And I'd love to stay at range and be the sniper. And there I get actually now um, focused not just by the uh, enemy cruiser here. That hurts a lot and the ship burns a lot because there are a lot of uh, fuel tanks in the turtle back region. But also enemy patrol boats are aiming for me. And they are annoying. They also can set me on fire. I'm a piercing salvo out. Let's see what we can achieve with it. Yep, we knocked out the transmission. Good stuff right there. I think that's also an Empton, if I'm not mistaken. Now, as secondaries, you can have here the uh, 88s. You have overall eight, um, six of them in three double turrets. And they fire the time fuse HE, so no proximity fuse HE. They're not too bad against big bombers. But overall, that brings me to the weak thing about this ship, and that is air attacks. Fritz X, the 5-ton bomb from the uh, Soviets and also in general big bombs uh, like 500 kilograms and up, so 1000 pounds and up, they can actually one-shot you. And I think in this respect you're not as sturdy than the Emden. Now let's talk about a factor that I think is the decisive thing why I think the ship is awesome and that is the precision, that is the dispersion of the shells and especially at long ranges and I will feature this specifically in the review, you can pull off those amazing snipes, you can almost go for certain parts of a ship um, like turrets 
or at least for the front and the rear section and the superstructure or the main belt so to say of an enemy ship at ranges exceeding six kilometers snapping something at eight kilometers is as long as you have a clear line of sight not a problem the shells keep their trajectory and their speed they're on a flat trajectory that are still very precise and that is just incredible and this now brings me to the comparison with other ships not so much the other cruisers but more like the destroyers because i have figured something out that the german destroyers that are equipped with the 128 millimeter are highly highly inaccurate and everything that is beyond two kilometers you have severe problems of actually hitting and the dispersion is drastic the other two destroyers quote-unquote destroyers namely the type 1939 and the kanon boat card 2 have very very good accuracy despite having smaller guns less guns less rate of fire you just tend to hit your targets and therefore do over time massively more damage especially at range and this is where i think this ship is so good now there you can see it is nearly a brawling situation versus a kms empton and he inflicts massive pain at a range of two to three kilometers i don't want to be in a brawling situation he can easily punch through my turtle back and if he would know where to aim he could just strip me off my armament i'm forced to extinguish the fire have a penalty on the repair you name it and it could defeat me but watch those shots against this uh, enemy can um, hms enterprise at a range of five and a half kilometers let's see how good we actually can hit him and i switch here to armor piercing to inflict even more pain the front turret is knocked out and just look at that accuracy and just look how the shells converge and punch through the armor and hit in the middle okay that was mostly miss have to adjust here a little bit the uh, aim and there we go the other ship i sadly cannot really hit um i tried to snipe here over the ridge line but that's not possible i'm too close to it to lob the shells over it and from now on it's getting ridiculous it's getting intense again so the accuracy to actually hit the enemy is a very important factor and that is what now makes the following gameplay so amusing i tried to duel myself i, I tried to go and duel here this kames empton but he's in a better position because he can lob the shells over the ridge line more than i can and i have to be patient here and i have to wait for my chance and i have to endure the well the damage here meanwhile i can distract myself with some of the destroyers and that looks painful that was a bit too much in the front let's adjust for it yeah you do massive amount of damage in fact the accuracy seems to be a bit too good because you just hit all in one spot now we hit another set of torpedo tubes and again we ammo rack him here i think there is a certain pattern um, in this video with a uh, torpedo tube snipes but i'm not done yet you know so there is now a small helpless destroyer funnily enough uh, he will last the longest of the ships that i actually aim for and just look what damage we inflict to him down to 24 percent after the first salvo but now the front is saturated down to 20 percent and i could switch here to armor piercing and punch through um you know the nose and then i see that there is another light cruiser and it's a Köln. oh that's not good that's not good let's try to snap the turret i aimed a little bit too low he launches torpedoes the front tubes are not emptied yet he launches two last one and i am wreck him with the last torpedo tube having not launched a torpedo <laughs> this is how good you can snipe and again empty your torpedo tubes this is how you get destroyed in your light cruisers or your destroyers with a one shot that is not an amorak but he launched one torpedo far far in the back 
uh, and so I tried to out accelerate it but I'm not quite sure if I can make it and oh, he actually hits me I'm flooding one turret is knocked out my propulsion is down I will drift forwards I'm already listing hard to one side one last salvo on this destroyer yes we get it very very good and now the damage con is under its way I'm recovering here I'm listing to the left side here there is another light cruiser this looks like an Empton the question is if we can repeat here this uh, torpedo tube trick but I'm drifting actually um, away from him sadly I cannot launch here a torpedo um, despite being in the capture zone this is one very tricky situation because you refill your torpedo tubes and you just don't realize it and then suddenly the Amorex, the external Amorex that you emptied are now full again. So my anti-aircraft is blazing away. But the plane is coming in. And this is a very tricky situation. I tried to smoke up. But he has me in his sights. My anti-aircraft is still blazing away. I destroyed a Chayu 288, but a Satan lands next to me and blows me apart. That was my double ace. That was nine ship kills and one aircraft. Now, the question is, what should I use here? And I decide actually to go with the MZ-1 into battle because it has torpedoes and it's my only not so expensive patrol boat. And I also have access to armor piercing. So now I actually want to aim again for the torpedo tubes. That's my first thought. And I launch one of the two torpedoes if the KMS Empton uh, goes into the capture zone and actually slows down. Because the lead indicator, um, well, moves forward. So I should shoot through the island, which obviously doesn't work. His turrets are pointed the other way. I could disable them one by one, but that's a serious problem here because it has so many of them. I switch here to armor piercing and we hit the torpedo tube, but it was empty. It was empty. We hit it a second time and that's just bad. And uh, now his turrets turn and he's aware of me. A lot of anti-aircraft firepower coming my way. That is not good. Somebody in the Jaguar actually goes around the island. That's an expensive patrol boat. And that is a KMS Empton. So a plane is coming in. My anti-aircraft is, um, you know, aimed at it. Let's see what we can do with the twin 88s. Armor piercing. <sighs> Today is the day of the plane snipes. 11 kills right now. So that's great. So... Those were all the incredible shots. Wait, I have one more left. Um, I tried to go here, but obviously the KMS Empton is not a fool. He knows I'm coming. Um, and this is where I make a little bit of a mistake. I should have launched a torpedo right there, but then he shoots a full salvo and I explode without launching the torpedo. So then I respawn for the second time um, and this time in the German destroyer the type 1936 which is very similar to, to the Karl Galster and there the last enemy destroyer comes out of cover which is a big big mistake obviously I aim for the ammo rack right there but the first salvo is HE we switch to AP and with his final salvo he actually knocks out my bridge I ammo rack him for my 12th kill but I'm going in a straight line the match is close and I need to turn into the capture zone. But gladly, one of my team colleagues in the Z20 was with me. He's actually now, um, yeah, he is decapturing the point and in the future capturing it. I look where the KMS Empton is. Let's rotate the turrets, which are really slow to rotate. And let's just blaze it away. Let's see if we can inflict any sort of meaningful damage. Come on. Yeah, and that is kind of the end of the game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first plane shot with the full salvo. I hope you enjoyed all the torpedo tube snipings. Please, please empty your torpedo tubes to not get frustrated. In patrol boats, it's a little bit of a different uh, thing because you need the torpedoes and you do 
not die that often by torpedo tube detonations, but in destroyers and light cruisers it is a must do. So let's have a quick look at the post battle results. For our 2 aircraft kills and 10 ship kills, we got 56,000 silver lines and 8,247 vehicle research points. And a nice battle trophy of 10,000 silver lines on top of this. So that was my first impressions of the KMS Köln, an absolute sniping machine that can eat a lot of damage, but you know, Satan's normally ended. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Please give this video a like if it did, subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the naval section of War Thunder. Are you excited and on your way to research the KMS Köln? What are your ex uh, well, what are your experiences with it? Also let me know if you think that the KMS Empton is still the top dog. And we'll see each other in the skies, on the battlefields and on the waves of War Thunder.